Hello everybody and welcome back. Thanks for tuning into my channel. My name is Dominic and I'm the host of the Android Factory. I know I've been away for a little while so I apologize for that, but I've been itching to make some more content and I have a little bit of a Hilt demo here, so I'm excited to bring that to you. Uh, if you are brand new, consider subscribing and if you are returning, I, again, I do apologize and consider hitting the like button to just help this video out. Uh, so we've created a little application here that doesn't really do too much as far as uh, you know functionality wise But it will serve as a good example for hilt here So every time we click this button we get a new image URL and we load it in here, All right? So let's take a look at our uh, Structure here. We have an activity. We have a view model repository and then uh, something called a service here looking at the activity We have a binding here. We have a view model set up and then simply in on create we basically do the absolute bare minimum uh, to get this app up and running. So we have an on click listener on our button, which tells our view model here to go ahead and fetch a new image URL. And then we just observe those changes here in this live data. Uh, when we get a new image URL, we load that into uh, the image view via Picasso there. So nothing too crazy, pretty familiar if you've seen it, uh, if you've seen any of the content on this channel before. Inside of our view model, we have just the basic uh, view model here. We have a repository, some live data, and a function in here to basically interact with our repository, uh, get a new image URL, and then post that information to the live data, right? So following the MVVM pattern, a very basic example of it, um, but again, should look pretty familiar. Inside of our repository class, we have a uh, a service defined here, which we will get to in a moment, and then a single function here, uh, get random image URL, and then that actually kind of works with the service to actually get the random image URL. So our service is pretty bare bones, again, nothing too complicated, but it just has a list of random images, and then uh, a function on here to randomly get uh, one of these elements in the list here, right? So let's talk about dependency injection and Hilt and kind of what this idea is, right? So outside of code, um, the, the idea of dependencies is that something, you know, if, if A depends on B to operate, um, it a is going to need B in order to actually function the way that it should, right? A real world example would be that the a car depends on wheels, right? If a car doesn't have wheels, it's not going to be able to go. Uh, but obviously, if it does have wheels, that's a step in the right direction and it can work. Uh, clearly, a car depends on much more than just a wheel or wheels, um, but it's that idea, right? Something depends on something else in order to function properly. So this repository is a very good example of that in the sense that if we take a look at this function here that gets a random image URL, well, the repository doesn't actually know how to do that, right? It kind of offloads that work into the service, which is good object-oriented design, reusability, all that kind of stuff. Um, but point is, is that there is a dependency here. And the unfortunate part is that there is what we call a transitive dependency here, right? Um, when we create this repository in the view model, it just looks like we're creating a regular object here, a regular instance of a repository. However, when you do that, under the hood, another instance of an object is created, and then that object is used to actually allow the repository to function. Um, so I don't know if you've ever really considered this kind of design, but realistically, it, there could be a better way to actually do this. And the better uh, way to do that is actually taking this information here and putting it inside of the constructor. Um, if you've already thought this was a good idea, then good for you. Uh, very happy to hear so. And if this is kind of new or different thought process, um, here's exactly why, right? We still obviously need this service in order, in order for this function, for this repository to function properly. But now we've kind of told the call site here, the, the declaration that, hey, we actually need something at this point, right? And we can see here, there's an IDE error, it says no value passed in for service. And we can see that this thing depends on the image URL service, right? So ideally, maybe the image URL service can come from somewhere else, right? Maybe you would be able to pass it in here, and then you can kind of trickle it down into this uh, repository. The idea is that we kind of want to remove transitive dependencies wherever possible, right? So in this case, we can just very simply create an instance of that object if we want to here. Uh, if we had multiple repositories that needed this service, you know, we could do something like this, where we define uh, the service once, and then you can reuse it uh, in multiple different areas, right? But the point is, is that now we've kind of constructed this object out of another object. And so you can kind of imagine how the more layers and the further deep you go, um, the more nesting and the more, um, 
this idea of kind of like hoisting things to the next level kind of comes about and could potentially get a little bit more annoying right to build out um, however this is where hilt or any dependency injection library really starts to shine we can define certain aspects of our dependency tree or dependency graph and hilt can actually build these things for us here right because it's also possible that we want to reuse this service not only in this repository but maybe in some other repository in a different view model or just randomly in the activity for some reason or whatever the case is and we want to make sure that we are using either the same instance of the service or that we if there is a construction process to that's this service that we do it the same way every time, right? To ensure the same results and all that kind of good stuff. So we can actually use um, Hilt here to, to help us out with this. So we don't really need this anymore because this is pretty straightforward, uh, but this is a much better approach here because we've now defined uh, our our dependency up front. So I do just want to run this here just to prove to you that we've really not changed anything and you know functionally and so this app will still function the same and for what it's worth when we introduce hilt nothing is going to be different as far as functionality wise right it's still going to work as expected so hilt isn't necessary let's say uh, but it definitely can make your life a lot easier on many fronts uh, testing one of them reusability better code design a more familiar code base for more people to kind of come in and out of kind of thing uh, a more professional or standard approach etc so there's a lot of reasons to use hilt but just to be clear, you don't absolutely need Hilt in order to do anything here. So uh, let's pop over here to the documentation and we can take a look at what it means to actually get Hilt into our application. So taking a peek here, I'll go ahead and link these uh, uh, this link in the description of the video so you can go there. This is the Hilt documentation. It kind of provides a whole bunch of information as far as uh, dependencies that you need uh, to add in, plugins, capped, annotation processing, the actual dependencies themselves. So there's a reasonable amount here. Um, uh, you need to be using at least Java 8, I believe, in your project. And then it starts to actually get into the documentation of how to use Hilt, what it means, and all that kind of stuff. So give me a moment here. I'm going to go ahead and get our project up to date with all these dependencies. Okay, so we have our plugins here updated. We have our dependencies updated. We added in capped. Um, and we even updated the dependencies here, the class path at the project level. So uh, also before I go any further, this, there will be uh, a link to the GitHub repo uh, for all this code. So you can just pull it down yourself if you don't want to actually change anything. So now that we have it all in there uh, and we, we have our project up to date and ready to go, the first thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to create an application class um, because we are going to have to annotate this. So we are going to just uh, basically leave this as is, except we can go into our manifest. And if we define here the my application name uh, attribute inside of the application tag, this will now uh, actually run and kind of invoke this code first uh, before any of your activities get invoked. So it's a pretty good place to do some initialization. And in this case, it's actually required uh, for Hilt to work properly. So what we can do here is annotate this with Hilt Android app. And that is kind of the very beginning to the, um, the Hilt world here. You cannot get around this. Uh, so we are going to need to have this application class defined and then it annotated with this information. But uh, for now, that's really all we need to do. So it's pretty straightforward. And then from there, Hilt is going to work off of all these different uh, annotations, right? So we have the Android app, we have an entry point, and then we have a whole bunch of different scopes and ways to kind of communicate what should be injected and where and how long it should live for and if it should be a singleton or if it shouldn't. And a lot of this is described here inside of the um, the, the documentation here, so I don't really want to necessarily take you through all of all this kind of stuff uh, and instead just kind of get into the meat and potatoes of it here, right? So considering we are going to basically inject things into the view model because the view model contains the repository and the repository contains the service, um, all of that kind of bubbles out to the activity or if you're operating in like a fragment based structure, if it bubbles up to the fragment, you are going to have to uh, annotate that class with the uh, Android entry point. And again, this is just boilerplate stuff that you're going to need to do. If you want to use Hilt in any one of your activities uh, or fragments, you are going to have to add this annotation as part of it, right? So now that is all good, you can go ahead and just uh, run things here. I'm not gonna actually show you, but I just wanna make sure we don't run into any issues uh, because the app doesn't, it'll still function as expected, right? 
Uh, but one thing that we can do here is we can kind of clean this whole thing up, right? This idea of creating this uh, image repository and it requires this service. Um, if we wanted to kind of replicate this in multiple view models, it would get a little copy and pasty, it would be a little annoying, and it wouldn't really be all that testable either, right? It would be very annoying to maintain. maintain. So what we can do here is we can annotate this uh, constructor with at inject and then constructor. And this will notify, uh, sorry about that, this will notify Hilt of, um, uh, you know, a, a dependency that we want it to kind of keep track of and allow it to create, right? So we want to, we want to give Hilt the ability to create the repository class, the my image repository. And in this case, in order for it to do that, it needs to know how to create the my image URL service. So you can kind of think of these different files these different segments as like nodes in a graph, right? Because that's really what it does. It builds out a dependency graph. Uh, and eventually you are going to reach a leaf, right? And in this case, we are at a node, right? And it has one child, let's say this my image URL service is one of the dependencies, one of the children of this class, as far as in the dependency graph goes. So if we go to this um, my image URL service, we see that there are no dependencies that are here, right? So we can actually just again, very simply have the at inject constructor here. Um, and now we get this little annotation up here uh, inside of our, whatever this is, by, the, by the, the numbers of our file here. And we can see that Hilt has actually recognized that this class is being used somewhere else, right? And if we click that, we can actually see, and there's a new one here as well. Um, okay, this is starting to build this graph here, right? So this is the child. Uh, and if we go ahead and click it, if there were multiple usages of it, it would kind of let you see multiple usages. But since there's only one, bring you right to that one spot, right? We can go ahead and kind of toggle back and forth between these little icons. This is going to show you where it's actually getting the dependency from. And then this is showing you where the dependency is being used from or, or being used at what location in code, right? So again, if I were to run it, no big deal, nothing were to change. And more importantly, this information doesn't change either right? In the sense that we still need to do this kind of boilerplate. Um, there is no way to uh, get around that with our current structure. However, this is really where the power of Hilt starts to come in. If you don't know, trying to put something in this constructor here is extremely annoying. We'd have to create a view model factory. We'd have to use that view model factory out here. You couldn't necessarily just like create a new instance of a view model in the activity or fragment that you're using, like you would normally create an object and pass in the dependencies into the constructor. It just doesn't work like that. It's just not set up to, to function that way. And getting it to function that way is very, very gross if you don't use a solution like Hilt, right? Um, so again, annotations everywhere. Uh, I forget what it's called. Android. No, it's called Hilt View Model. Right? We annotate that. Now somehow we can just magically put in uh, a repository, or, or we can put in whatever dependency that we want here. Right? So we can just very easily convert both of these lines here to just be the my image repository and we can just go ahead and delete this. And so now this is a little funky, right? Because previously we were actually creating the instance of the repository. And in order to do so, we have to create an instance of the image URL service, right? Um, we literally, ju you just saw, me, just saw me delete all that code. But now we've simply annotated this Hilt view model. We've gone ahead and told it that we could just put it in the constructor. And now nothing here has changed inside of our activity either. But yet, if we go ahead and run this from here, we see that I forgot an annotation. <laughs> so my apologies. Um, instead of just a regular constructor here, we need to actually just, again, do our at inject, in, at inject, inject constructor, sorry. Um, and then everything will actually, it should work at that point. <laughs> um, but miraculously, we can annotate the Hilt view model here. We can annotate the constructor that it can be injected. And again, we get these different uh, icons here inside of our little sidebar here, right? And so then again, we can see where the repository is coming from. We can see where the service is coming from and we can see where the repository is being used. And then, yeah, unfortunately, we can't actually see exactly where the, the view model is being used from clicking here, but we know that exists in the activity, right? And it is just defined like we normally have it defined here. So if we bounce over here to this to our app again, we can go ahead and click things and 
it's just going to work as expected, right? Uh, of course, we're getting the same image URL a few times, so that's why it doesn't seem to change every time we click the button. Um, but point is, is the app is functioning again properly, right? And the crazier part is that we've actually stopped creating objects, right? We've created, we, we've defined them, but we haven't actually created them every single time, right? We have the image URL service class, we have the repository class, and we've told it that, hey, in order for this thing to function, we need a service here. So we'll just put it in the constructor. We annotate it with at inject and miraculously once you kind of do that up the chain hilt just understands how to build everything it understands where the dependencies come from and it knows how to construct them more importantly right these are just very basic objects that basically if if it knows how to create this object it can create any object that depends on this object and then therefore it can continue with that logic going up the tree and with these very simple annotations we now have the ability to completely remove the need to create these objects ourselves and instead we can use a library to do that for us the most powerful part here in my opinion is being able to annotate something with at hilt view model and then you can just start asking for things in the repository uh, inside of, sorry inside the view model in the constructor here um, that is a massive win, and that alone is a large enough win to use Hilt uh, over not using Hilt. And so in the next video, because I think this one is getting long, we're going to explore the other option uh, when it comes to dependency injection, specifically field injection, uh, and we can actually make use of this uh, image loading library, right, because that is something that you're going to want to use uh, multiple times, and maybe you want to create a wrapper object around loading something in, uh, and so we can actually inject that straight into the activity so that we don't have to work with the third-party library in every single place that we want to uh, actually load in an image and whatnot. So here we've kind of covered uh, constructor injection, which is probably the more important one or the, or the one that you'll see more frequently, maybe the one that you're more used to, right, as just like an object-oriented uh, programmer. Uh, and, and really Hilt here, just with a few annotations, can basically do everything for us. So hopefully this has uh, been helpful, you've learned something, and in the next episode we're going to go ahead and just extend this and instead we're going to also uh, look at field injection so thank you for uh, sticking with me i know this video might be a little bit longer uh, if you made it this far i'd really appreciate a thumbs up any and all feedback is welcome and i'll catch you guys in the next one thanks